Hey, this is the Pi Piper, and this is episode 7. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to start your own hacker lab. Now, a hacker lab is essentially something that you use to test, uh, for example, exploits, test tools out, and or maybe you just want to play around with the tool without doing anything illegal. Now this is what makes a hacker lab great and it can be inexpensive now because of our um, hardware and we can do virtualization and that sort of thing. So today we're going to be using VirtualBox and we're going to install XP Service Pack 1 or the original. Uh, this is important because some of the older exploits that work on Windows uh, may not work with the later versions of Service Packs on XP. So that's why it's important to install XP. We're getting set up for the next lot of tutorials where I'll be talking about Metasploit and Exploitation Framework and how you can actually pwn boxes and that sort of thing. So the first thing you'll need today is VirtualBox. You should, if you watched any previous tutorials, you should already have VirtualBox. But if you don't have VirtualBox, go and download it from www.virtualbox.org. Uh, once you get that downloaded and set up, you're going to need Windows XP. Now, some people may have the original Windows XP disk, or they may have Service Pack 1, but if you have Service Pack 2 or 3, um, it won't be sufficient to this tutorial. So if you don't have Windows XP uh, original or Service Pack 1, you can always download it from Pirate Pay. I'm not really recommending piracy, but really, we're not really using Windows XP for that long and as a main machine we're just testing stuff out and my personal opinion is that Windows XP should be free now it's like 10 years old or something but if you don't have it you can always download it from Pirate Bay I'll have a link in the description and you can get it from there it's about 600 megabytes um, so it won't break your internet alright so once you've got all those tools um, I'm just going to go ahead and launch VirtualBox here and I've already got my Backtrack instance. If you do not have that, go back to previous tutorials and go and install that in VirtualBox. We're going to create a new virtual machine here and let's click next and we'll type Windows XP SP1 and it's Microsoft Windows and Windows XP so we'll go next then we give it a memory um, it doesn't really require that much memory. I'm going to give it about 500 meg. Should be plenty. And the next thing, it will ask you to create a disk, and 10 gigabytes is fine. We'll create it and create it. All right. So the next thing we'll do is start up our virtual machine, and we'll come up with this first run wizard. We're going to need to select our ISO file. So I'm going to do that now and click start. So that will boot up the disk so we can then enter the installation process. So it's reading off that disk. Alright, now once it's finished loading all the modules and files, it will just ask you to partition or install on a disk and we'll need to format it just to NTSF format so just hit enter and enter and let that go through all right so I'll start copying the files and it's going to restart our virtual machine to begin uh, the installation alright and you'll go through the installation stuff we'll just give it a sec Alright, and it'll just prompt you for the name, so I'm going to put my name as Victim.
and you'll enter your product ID. I got just got the one off Pirate Bay, so I'm just gonna enter the product key from here. All right, so once you enter the product key for your product, go next, and it'll just ask you for the computer name. I'm just gonna call it Victim again, and it'll ask you for an administrator password. You probably should set one. It doesn't really matter, but just for situation purposes, I'm gonna call it just password, and we'll go next, and you'll select your time. press OK and let that run through and finish installation alright so just it will prompt you for a work group if it hasn't already just put something in oh my god my spelling is really bad today Alright, next. And we'll begin copying all the files um, for Windows XP onto our virtual machine hard disk. Alright, so it's finished and it's rebooting at the current moment. And what you can do is you can actually remove the disk from the virtual CD. So just right click that disk there and untick Windows XP Service Pack 1 or whatever ISO file you're using. And it will start to boot up XP into our virtual machine. Alright, just press K and OK. Alright, and you should get some sort of introduction like this, so I go next, and I'm just going to skip the internet, and I don't want to register, and your name, victim, alright, so I'll just put in John, click finish, Alright, and it'll load up XP, and we've got Victim John there. So what we need to do now is install our guest on so we can get USB network support, and also that bigger screen size. So to do this, all we have to do is go Devices, Install Guest Add-ons, and that will pop a CD into the virtual drive, and we just go through Next, and Next next install alright so once it's finished installing guest add-ons you will just reboot your machine And if I expand it out, it covers the whole application area. So that's how you install XP in VirtualBox. And this Windows XP machine is ready to get pwned.
BIOS and we're going to be testing a lot of exploits and we're going to start using Metasploit and learning how it works and what it actually does. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial on how to begin your hacker lab. Also I have to mention that in VirtualBox that you have your network settings. Now network settings are very important so our virtual machines can talk to us or our computer can talk to us. I recommend having the bridged adapter if you've got a router with a, T a DHCP server running on it which basically just gives it a standard IP address and just make sure you select the right device whether you have Ethernet or wireless and if you don't have that DHP um, server you can get, always go internal network but most people would have that uh, so bridged adapter should work fine if it doesn't go to internal network it will just mean you won't be able to access the internet but the computers will be able to talk to each other and network to each other so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and that will be it for today. Bye.